G'day viewers. Let's talk about whacking each other with really big swords. So two-headed swords of course come in various shapes and sizes. Uh, from something like this, which is what most people think of as a long sword. Um, this would be in English terminology a bastard sword because I can swing it around pretty good with either hand or both hands. Or this, which is a true two-handed sword. Uh, there's absolutely no way I can control this with one hand except maybe the odd thrust single. Or there's this, okay, so the Spadoni, the Montanti, the great sword, okay, really, really big honking swords like this. Now, if you want to fight with things like this, uh, you can of course fight with the steel wasters. Obviously, you also have to be fairly careful when you do so. Now, even at kind of three quarter speed and half power, um, these things are fairly convincingly superior to any old backsword or longsword or sword and buckler or sword and rotella. Okay, it doesn't take much to prove that when wielded properly, this is a terrifying instrument. But if you want to do Spadoni versus Spadoni, um, then these things obviously have to be swung with a great deal of care. Now, that's okay, care and control are important in uh, historical swordsmanship, but it would also be nice to be able to just let loose and do exactly what you're supposed to be doing with the weapons. And so it's also nice to have a safer substitute weapon, and I'm going to teach you how to make one. So we're going to start with an ordinary shinai, normal, full size, size 39 shinai. Now shinai are really, really good sword substitutes for doing kind of um, full power, full speed practice because they collapse in all planes and so you can whack around really hard with these and not really run too much risk of damage, damaging each other. So that's what we're going to base it on. Um, now the first thing you're going to need is the cross guard across there. So you'll note with this one, this was made by simply drilling a hole and sticking a bolt uh, right through the middle of the shinai. Now, this of course does weaken the structure of the shinai inside and the forces generated by swinging these things around is quite considerable um, and we found that over the course of say uh, a six months but only course these had a failure rate of maybe 25 to 30 percent now if you have to make a whole bunch of them really quickly to equip an entire class um, and that sort of uh, destruction is acceptable to you, by all means go the simple means, drill a hole, bang a bolt through and you're done. Um, but if you want something to last then you've really got to avoid damaging the shinai in any way. Now if you are technologically capable of getting a lump of wood or thick plastic and drilling a hole through it like that and carving it into some sort of cross guardy shape, um, that's of course by far the easiest thing to do and you end up with something like that. Okay. Now, if you're not technologically capable of doing that, I'm going to show you another fairly cheap and easy way that you can make a cross guard without damaging the shinai itself. So if you're not technologically capable of drilling a hole through a block of wood, um, the alternative thing to do is get yourself a strip of metal. Um, now this couldn't be thin steel, um, doesn't have to be terribly thick, you should want to be able to just about bend it in your hands. Um, and that's nice and tough and that's probably the best thing to use but again if you uh, aren't used to working metal and find that a little bit difficult you can do it with either softer stuff such as a strip of aluminium so aluminium's nice and pliable and easy to bend and easy to shape okay so I'm going to use aluminium for this example just to prove how simple it is to use and what I'm going to do is I'm basically just going to bend it in half like that and that's going to form the cross of the sword and it's going to sit around the handle like that okay um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my piece of wood here so this is a little bit smaller than the diameter of the shinai handle and I'm going to mark the middle of my cross guard and then I'm going to get a hammer and I'm going to put this on the edge of my workbench and just hammer away on both sides until the cross is nice and flat and I have formed a circle on either side around the dowel like that. 
um, and this is only going to take me a couple of minutes. And there it is, okay? So, that's the dowel, that's the cross guard, and this has just been hammered flat um, using the edge of a table or a workbench just to bash that down on either side until you end up with something like that. Okay? Um, now, aluminium is soft, so it's easy to work, it's easy to do that, okay? But we do want our cross guard to be relatively tough. Um, so all I'm going to do is get that bit of steel that I was going to say was too hard for me to work today. Um, I'm going to chop it in half and I'm going to put one half on either side of the hole. So one half on this side, one half on this side, but sandwich it together. Okay, so I've got the nice pliable bit that I've shaped and just a strip of steel between those um, to make it nice and tough and not likely to bend in the bashing of the swords. So that took about a minute. I've got two bits of metal, two bits of steel cut out with the angle grinder, um, which I've just sandwiched between the soft bits of aluminium in there. So that'll go in there, that'll go in there, and now my aluminium cross guard will not bend. Um, to be honest, you could just wrap this up in tape and uh, be done with it. Um, I'm gonna be a little bit more ambitious and I'm going to drill a couple of holes there and there and there and rivet the whole thing together. So to keep things as simple and low tech as possible, I'm actually just using uh, little split pin rivets that are designed for leather work, uh, like that, which you insert through the holes that you drill. There we are. Like so. And then you get the splitter or honestly even a um, screwdriver and hammer them flat and you end up with catch it in the light rivets like that and that holds, holds that sort of sandwich thing together like so. So to, before I put it on the shinai I've got to think about the dimensions of the sword. How long do I make the blade? How long do I make the handle? How long do I make it overall? Now Overall length, Vardy says it should come up to your armpit, so about there. Alfieri says it should be as high as a man, so up to about there. So somewhere in between those two lengths overall, I'm going to go for something about shoulder height. Um, now some of that's going to be grip, so how long do we make the grip? Um, I don't have any textual evidence for this, not yet, somebody out there might know something. This just seems to be a fairly simple um, and sensible way of figuring it out uh, from my experience with these weapons. Um, so these are large and fairly heavy weapons and you quite often get guards like this or this where you're actually supporting the weight of the sword on your own arm. And this really gives you the length of the grip that you want because when you're lying crossed arms like so the grip needs to be long enough that the cross of the sword lies beyond your left elbow, like so. When you're crossed on the other side, you want the grip not to be so long that this interferes with this arm. It wants to lie between your wrist and your elbow, so somewhere like that. So, and incidentally, if you have a Montanti or a Spadoni that's got sort of flanges on its Ricasso, you want them to lie beyond your right elbow there, up there, um, otherwise they dig into your arm, like so. So for me, the minimum grip I want for that is about 42 centimetres. The maximum would be 55 or thereabouts. So using that logic, I've cut myself a bit of PVC pipe of a diameter that's just large enough to fit over the handle of the shin eye, um, and I've made this 50 centimeters long to be in between those two measurements. Um, so if I want my shin eye to overall be about as high as my elbow, when I hammer this down onto the grip like that, I want it to sit to about, about there. So I've got a good overlap there. So this point here is where I'm going to put the cross guard of the sword. So slot that down to about that point there and that's where the cross guard is going to sit so that's giving me good 
hand span of extra length above and beyond what the Shinai normally gives me. So I'm now going to go and fix this to the Shinai. So that's now fairly securely riveted on there. It's nice and tight. Um, now it's possible that that might spin if it gets really hit hard, really spin around the handle. Um, but there's no reason you can't drop a little bit of glue in there or something just to hold it on, okay? This is not a dismantleable object, it's not coming off. So the last thing to do with the cross guard is take care of these rather sharp edges which would damage other shinai. Um, so the trick there is you get yourself a length of ordinary rubber garden hose, split it down the middle like so, and then you can put that over the edge of the cross guard like so, wrap that around the cross guard and then tape the whole thing up in duct tape or something like that. Um, and then you'll have a nice thick soft edge on your immovable, unbreakable cross guard um, without the need to drill wood. So I'll finish that off later. Um, let's move on to the grip. So I've got my piece of pipe, I've got my shinai handle. So I'm just gonna hammer that down onto there until it's nice and tight. So there is the cross guard with the uh, split hose wrapped around it, um, wrapped up in uh, tape. Uh, incidentally, this is medical or sport strapping tape, which I actually find is a really good tough tape to use for this kind of job. Um, and this has been hammered down as far as it can go. Now I'm also gonna wrap the handle in the same sort of tape just because plastic's a little bit slippery and this gives it nice, comfortable, firm grip. So I'll be doing that. Um, but the last other thing to do is currently this is hollow, okay? So you've got a bit of shinai handle up to about there and the rest of it is empty and I want to give it some solidity and I want to give it a little bit of weight and heft to more properly simulate a sword. Um, so I'm going to do that with this. So this is actually the same bit of dowel that I used earlier to shape the cross guard around and it's of a diameter that it'll slot into the grip like that and fill that up. So that is now got a solid piece of wood through the whole thing. Um, now I'm going to glue that in with a good dollop of glue. It doesn't need to come out so I want that in there nice and securely um, and let that dry and then I will wrap the handle up. So there's the handle all wrapped up in tape just to give it a slightly better grip. Um, so the final thing to do is bung a pommel on. Any old rubber door stoppery type thing that you can slip over the end will do. I happen to have this thing lying around so I'm just going to pop that on there with a little bit of contact glue just to hold it in place and there I have the entire Montanti Waster all made. Um, I've also just for a bit of fun put the little rubber ring up on there um, to be the flanges on my Ricardo sitting just over my elbow like so there and the cross guard sits just over my um, on and crossed on the other side like that. So there you are. So once you've made one of these, and that took me probably 20 minutes in total from beginning to end, which is a lot quicker than I could say carve a wooden cross guard. Um, so it's a really quick and easy way of putting a, these sorts of things together. Um, and once you've got one, you can do this with them. One, two, Thank you. 
Yeah, that's good. Three miles. Oh, come on. Double. And five, three. That was cool. <laughs> oh! Now do it again, we didn't hear it. Five one.